Yeah. Yeah. It's four o'clock, no? No. Yeah, you can start. You can start. Yeah. Okay, so uh, good evening to all the esteemed members of the Ocean Society of India, ladies and gentlemen. The Ocean Society of India conducts invited talks as part of the OSI webinar series that is uh, held once in every month. And this talk is arranged from eminent scientists, engineers, academic professionals, working in the broad areas of atmospheric and oceanic sciences, ocean engineering and technology. And uh, this webinar series is mainly targeted for students, researchers, scientists, engineers, and working professionals in the broad areas of atmospheric sciences, ocean sciences, ocean engineering and technology, with a motive to impart and improve the knowledge that is benefiting the OSA community. I request all the members to actively participate and get involved in all the lectures under the OSA webinar series that is held every month. So on behalf of uh, OSA, it is my proud privilege to welcome today Dr. Prabhakar Mishra, Scientist F, National Center for Coastal Research, Chennai. For this invited talk. Dr. Prabhakar Mishra will be delivering a talk on the topic assessment of litter and microplastic contamination along the Indian coast and the necessity of national marine litter policy. So this is a topic uh, that is highly relevant today affecting our marine environment, coastal waters and the water quality. Dr. Prabhakar Mishra completed his master's degree, MSc in Oceanography in 1985 and uh, MPhil in Physical Oceanography in 1989 and PhD in Marine Sciences in 1993 from Barampur University, Odisha. Further, he obtained the Doctorate of Agriculture degree, DA degree from the University of Tokyo, Japan in Aquatic Bioscience during 2001. So his PhD was on the topic studies on some aspects of coastal processes at Gopalpur, South Odisha. He joined the National Center for Coastal Research, Ministry of Earth Sciences, Chennai, as Scientist D in October 2004 and presently working as Scientist F in the same organization. Dr. Prabhakar Mishra is very actively involved in the execution and implementation of R&D programs related to shoreline management plan, tsunami inundation modeling, water quality modeling, and development of prediction systems. He is also involved in the maintenance, procurement of oceanographic instruments, providing overall support to the Ministry of Earth Sciences Government of India. The current research interests of Dr. Prabhakar Mishra are on topics such as the beach processes, sedimentation, coastal zone management, near shore processes that includes waves, tides, currents, and littoral transport, coastal pollution, water quality, prediction systems, litter, and microplastics. 
he was uh, actively involved in supervising many doctoral theses of Berhampur University. Also, he has delivered several invited talks in many forums and participated in several training programs and workshops. Dr. Prabhakar Mishra was a member in the expert group meeting on marine litter and microplastics that was held at Nairobi, Kenya in May 2018 and at Geneva, Switzerland that was held during December 2018. He was also a member of the expert working group meeting on the protection of Arctic marine environment at Oslo in Norway during February 2020. He has published more than uh, 72 scientific research papers in reputed scientific journals and conferences with 1043 citations. So with this brief introduction, it is my proud privilege to kindly invite our speaker for today, Dr. Prabhakar Mishra, to deliver the talk. I also request the participants that uh, the question and answers session will be attended after completing the talk. And uh, the questions actually can be messaged for the speaker in the chat box. Thank you very much. So now I invite uh, Dr. Prabhakar Mishra to please uh, deliver the invited talk. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Bhaskarji. And uh, to all the participants, and thank you. It is a great privilege. And uh, I'm really delighted to be part of, uh, means to give a talk uh, for the OSI. And uh, let me share my slides. So I think my slide is visible. And yes, sir, it's visible. Yeah, it's visible. So the topic which uh, was uh, actually very recently I am working on uh, because uh, we are given uh, that is assessment of uh, litter and microplastics uh, for Indian coastal waters and uh, there it is all this uh, research what uh, we are going to do just to come out with, a, with uh, the real information the data which can be used in the formation of a national marine litter policy. So having said that, with that uh, uh, motive, um, sir, slide is changing, sir, okay? Yeah, slide, slide is changing, sir. Okay. So with this background, actually the genesis, the starting point of marine litter and microplastic the consciousness among the scientists uh, means about the contamination, the ill effect of this came after the paper of Jambeck et al. Nine in science in 2015. When it came, in that paper, she has warned, the authors have warned that by the, the amount of mismanaged plastic that is entering to the ocean is very huge and uh, they had calculated it is something like 4.8 to 12.7 million metric ton entering to the ocean. And the, by the end of 2050, the total weight of uh, plastics will be outnumbering the total weight of fish available in the our ocean. So, and they also identified that the countries in the South uh, Asian region, Indo-Pacific region are the major culprit because in those countries, the <clears throat> You can see those countries here that is given in this uh, uh, panel, you can see that is which have been shown in the red, that is the proportion of plastic that is mismanaged that is entering to the ocean. And, uh, and uh, this uh, actually the, from the source, the riverways, the waterways, they are being carried to the, to the uh, ocean and uh, there were some estimates initially that that major rivers they contribute 91 percent of plastics in 2017 starting with uh, that estimate later on there are two three papers two three <clears throat> authors but these are all based on hypothetical data um, i mean so on the probabilistic uh, feature so the leverton at all and the ma later on 2021 majors at all they say that that the major contributor by 
the more than 1000 rivers, that is the small rivers, they contribute more 80% of the global annual emission ranging between 0 0.8 million to 2.7 million metric tons per year. And this revised estimate of global revenue in microplastics, basically they try to uh, compute the total amount of macroplastics, that means plastics more than 2.5 uh, centimeter, uh, so macroplastics and field observations distributed on the based on the probability model and taking into our hydrodynamics as well as taking into consider the mismanaged plastic waste, the plastic production of individual countries. And they collected the data, something like 136 field sampling, field uh, observations covering 67 rivers in 14 countries. And they come to the conclusion that 1000 rivers account for almost 80% of the plastic and very small rivers, 25% emission, whereas the very large rivers, they are, they are 1% emission. So we are all this ultimately, this gives an idea that the, 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 the linkage between the source and the sink, and the, ultimately that goes to the ocean and with the gyre ocean gyre systems, as we know, there are the very five Jazz system, ocean jazz in all the our oceans. And uh, there was some proof, there was some findings that the Great Pacific Jazz, that is the, the plastics, the plus Great Pacific Jazz was in the central part of the Pacific Ocean, which this uh, the right side, the panel picture shows that the amount of plastic that is being accumulated in part of the Pacific Ocean. And here, the most important point that the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, 99% is plastic, and it covers a huge area. There is something like 1.6 million square kilometer. And there were 1.8 trillion pieces of plastics, and which uh, you can see the central portion to from the core and it gets distributed in between the Hawaii, San Francisco and Mexico. So this is really gave an alarming situation for the oceanographers, for the environmentalists. And this also, there is very interesting data that came that from that data, they analyze 8% of microplastic, 13% mesoplastic, 26% macroplastic, and 53% mega plastic that has been estimated and uh, these also partly 46 percent of this total marsh is made from discarded fishing gear which we call it the terms of ghost on it and uh, the basic problem of plastic that why we should be worried that if i quote mr achim stenner who was right now working as a Vice Chair for the UN Sustainable Development Group as well as the UNDP Administrator. He, in his version that this is a problem of management, that this is persistent poor management of our natural resources. So the plastic has already, we are using a lot of single use of plastic and other forms of plastic, but how best we are going to improve our waste reduction, waste management and recycling initiative that is the the important point and the ones we throw a plastic right now if a plastic bottle or a plastic disposable diapers it can remain in our environment to the next 450 years and a fishing line can remain for the 600 years this information this data is available in trust tables uh, report and uh, there it shows clearly that from the, the life expectancy, average life expectancy of a man, suppose 70 years, but a plastic tin can that can go for 50 years, a aluminum can go for 200 years, a plastic beverage holders can go for 400 years, and ultimately a fishing line can remain in 600 years in the environment. And uh, out of that, the marine liter, when we're talking about the marine liter, 
most of them are plastics. Let us say three fourth of them are plastics and others were well, items such as wood, cloth, sanitary, paper, and cupboards that occupy the other 25%. So the importance of this plastic in the environment, the hazardous effect, we have already seen the footprints of MP everywhere from the deepest uh, the marina trench. There was nine seawater samples and 25 sediment samples were collected and they found that that the dominant polymer is pit that polyethylene tetraplatelet and similarly the mount at the tallest mountain Everest we have seen that the dominant is fibers and in the human placenta it has been also reported that the polypropylene the polymer type is polypropylene and as well as the by the wind it can also travel a distance of 95 to 100 kilometer even some of the studies which uh, uh, we have uh, we have seen also in the desert some of the greater part of desert also have observed so having said that this plastic once from the land or from the the mismanaged plastics what it enters through the waterways to the water body what happens to them the important point is that the plastic gets through the weathering process goes through the weathering process and the um, bigger plastics the mega plastics becomes macroplastic or microplastics or microplastics and again from the microplastics it can go up to nanoplastics and uh, the size that is the the five one to five millimeter we can say micro larger plastics that is micro large and below one millimeter we can say small MPs or smaller microplastic that is nanoplastic the biggest problem is these microplastics that means the plastic particles less than five millimeter and if you look at that plastics we can classify two types of plastic plastics microplastics one is the primary plastics another is the secondary plastic the primary plastic which are being produced which are being made for particular uses like pallets used in personal care products nodules that are being by being in the we are we are making it uh, for our different purpose and uh, so the secondary plastic it is the, through the weathering prop of bigger plastic whatever going to the microplast going to the form of microplastic is the secondary plastics and uh, the sources, there are a number of sources to the, our coastal waters and ultimately it is transported through the current system as we saw to the, <clears throat> to the greater part of the deep ocean. So the sources are, there are unaccounted sources as well as the accounted sources. The process, as I said, the wind can transport, the circulation can transport, the vertical mixing can mix it and that can go and settle also and also the river plumes, coastal currents, surface waves, all the hydrodynamics that works in our coastal area that can uh, take the entire plastic plastic particles to the deeper part of the ocean also can make it to move along the coast. So the major sources like agricultural activities, like STPs, the sewage treatment plants like slum areas which are not having proper you know sewage treatments and the mangrove areas the activities the fishing activities the fishing hamlets the harbor activities and also the tourism and other type of activities along the beach along the, our coastline and it can also come through the storm water through from the tire dust liters uh, all this can reach to the uh, to the coastal area that can affect our marine biodiversity and uh, it starts so what is our role how we got involved with this plastic and marine litter studies the india joined the clean sea campaign in the year 2018 and 
our prime minister expressed concern regarding marine litter, especially microplastic, which he said is a major transboundary problem. And also, India promised to the world, to the United Nations, that by 2022, July, we are going to ban the single use of plastic in India. We are completely eliminate. This is no, no doubt ambitious pleads and for which our Prime Minister received the UN Championship Award Award. And with that, the ministry started to take off some of the programs for marine litter and microplastic and which for NCCR being a center for coastal research, we started working on quantifying the, because there was absolutely no data before the 2018, if you look at, we started working out and quantifying the some of the microplastics and marine la, marine litter data along the Indian coast. So if you look at the data, this is what for the Indian coast I have drawn, what is published. If you look at the data set, the upper panel, left upper panel shows that the year of publication, and you can see the microplastic litter or mixed type of publication, you can see there was absolutely, it started with 1982, a paper that was published by a group of scientists from National Institute of Ocean Technology when they are working for the, for the Andaman uh, area. So with that, it starts and they, there was absolutely not much publications and most of the publications are on litter till sometime around 2018, you can see there were some studies, there is a jump in the, the number of uh, papers but it is about 10 papers in a year, about 10 papers are getting published, but there is a sudden jump in 2019 and 20, and people started and a lot of, you know, universities, a lot of uh, researchers started uh, showing interest to work on microplastic related uh, uh, contamination and uh, started collecting the information. And uh, this information, actually, most of the earlier informations were limited to the beach system, only limited to the beach, which later on people started working on biota, on different aspects of um, coastal sediments and uh, coastal waters. And if you look at the entire scenario, like the sample type, and here I have divided the entire data, there are 54 publications from sediment, there are 10 publications from the water, there are 21 publications from the biota, there are two publications from the salt pan, and you can see the items, the number of uh, items, the number of you know, plastic particles per kg of sediment, something around, let us say, 0 to 415. And uh, similarly, the water, you can say 8 to 96, 97, so 1 to 69 particles in biota. Similarly, salt pans, there are in the salt pan also, there are items, something like around 70, let us say, items per kg. So, these are some of the ranges value, what we have the baseline data right now. And the research on MPs, you can see that to character, if you characterize what type of polymers, the composition, if you look at, that most of the polypropylene, that means PP33%, that means that these are from the single use of plastic is coming, and also the PVC, polyvinyl chloride, that is 20% and others. No doubt, all side types of uh, uh, polymer compositions we are finding, we are we are getting at the same time the identified sources, but the multiple sources are more, and then the river runoff, then you can say domestic waste, then you can say drainage, then the fishing. So this, uh, based on the past literature, we try to look at the data, and uh, this is the scenario. And uh, when we are asked to, because there was the, based on this data, we try to first formulate under the SHASEP, that is South Asian uh, Cooperative uh, Agents, uh, this is a UN, UN body environmental program. So and, uh, the, under this, we prepared our country plan, and because Southeast Asian, we want to make a South Asian Seas program for South Asian Seas, a regional action plan. So this was the first attempt made based on this data. We try to look at what is the present scenario. And the source is, as, as I said, then the, then the understanding 
the started that the land is the source and sink how we can connect it and how what type of studies we should do so that we can connect both and what should be the policy of the country that we can minimize this particular contamination so nccr national center for coastal research initiated some of the program and we got a lot of international collaborators like uh, we started this looking at the first is our gener generating a baseline data, then sources to sink, that is beaches, rivers, lagoons, mangroves, then interaction of MPs with biota, then particle modeling, how they are getting transported, then looking at the remote sensing and GIS photogrammetry approach, can we identify the areas of patches or the areas of the marine litter? And similarly, some of the international awareness, international collaboration we did with uh, the UK uh, Center for Fisheries and Aquaculture and for, for the Arctic Norway, um, for the Norway, for the European Union, for the JAMSTEC Japan. And similarly, we have also the collaboration with CSR Australia. And these collaborations just to have to standardize the methodology to take a few concentrate a particular area of research and and how we can develop the 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 tools and techniques for different types of measurements as well as how best we can uh, quantify our microplastic and marine litter pro data there was also it was of late it was realized no doubt that all these programs there is a lack of awareness among the public among the fishermen communities, among the different coastal stakeholders, for which a number of awareness programs, coastal cleansing campaigns, and also how to start off with some of the low cost technology to, to control the, uh, the marine litter, to uh, find out novel approach, so was, uh, was attempted. So the standard laboratory uh, protocol was designed with Cephas group for how to uh, sample for the sediment, how to sample for water, and how to go for the biota analysis. So we have a from different different types of some methodologies no doubt available, but we took a particular methodology approach. So which we are applying and which also with our collaborating organization, this particular methodology has been uh, shared, and we are following the same methodology so that later on we can have a comparison of our data, a fair comparison of our data. And uh, this is what so far we have done. No doubt we have already done a number of uh, cruises during this pandemic. No doubt, no doubt uh, there was a lot of restrictions, but uh, we have done almost 10 cruises all, uh, all along the east coast of India. And these are some of the data from the coastal, from the self waters, self sediments, and some of the beach sediments, and some of the biota, what we have collected, and the highest country concentration of MPs close to the river mouth during the northeast monsoon. That is what we observe in the sediments. Most observed MPs as poly, polyamide and polyethylene, and the probable sources are the fishing activities. Similarly, in the coastal water, we got along the east coast of India, the Krishna River at 10 kilometer distance and the lowest at Puri of Orissa coast. And the color, dominant color is the, in the water and sediment is blue and the small MPs are dominant, less than one millimeter are dominant. So, this information, the color of the also the uh, the microparticles, microplastics are important because the biota, the the fish and other animals, they with the based on the color, they by mistake they can take it, they ingest it as a food, and ultimately it can go to their body system. So similarly, macro litter in beach sediments, we have to try to look at the macro, meso at intertidal zone, at backshore, how it is getting transported and what is the abundance. And we studied some of the beaches and we saw in the backshore with the wind pattern, it goes and gets, you know, accumulated and the beaches closer to urban centers and multiple activities are more 
uh, contaminated or more polluted than the beaches on the rural areas. And similarly, the biota, that we have taken the fish species, and in, in, invariably, in all the samples, whatever fish species we took, there are some of the, yes, in some of the uh, two, to, two to three or microplastic particles we got. So similarly, Bival, Pernavardis was uh, also uh, examined and the dominant is polystream. So this is the story and some of the papers that has come with uh, microplastic particles and thread like fibers were detected in benthic invertebrates. And similarly, microplastic colorant were found in green marshall of Chennai coast. These are some of the investigation which has been published by uh, NCCR. At the same time, so some of the uh, information we collected for the west coast of India and which, are, which we are proposing in the next another one or two years, we are going to be intensively uh, get the data for west coast. And so, but we saw there as a low abundance of plastic debris when compared to other studies of Indian Ocean region, but we saw the polyethylene, polypropylene, low density microplastics, and these are coming from the fishing and packaging industries. So, another important thing that the beach, our beaches are getting highly contaminated, highly polluted. And this scenario is just after a flood. You can see the right hand side photographs. This is the recent flood that is in, happened in 20, 2021 in Chennai. This is the Marina Beach, one of the longest, widest beach of the country gets completely flooded with liters. Because what happens, there are two, as I said in the, my, some of my earlier slides, that the minor rivers and rivers which are flowing in the urban areas are the major contributors of marine liter. So these uh, the Chennai, Marina Beach, on the both sides, there are two rivers. One is the Ada River, another is the Kum River that is debouching to the Bay of Bengal. And they are, they bring a lot of, you know, sewage as well as a lot of the garbage, liters that is dumped in, when they crisscross the city and they bring it. And when there is a flood, a flood like situation, so the entire things are uh, come to the uh, uh, get into the ocean and ultimately with the coastal currents they are spreaded all over the beach and the 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 pts part is that with the with both the rivers on the both side of marina beach whatever the season of the uh, whatever the season of the year in the with the longshore north nor northerly longshore current or with the southerly longshore current the beach gets affected so this is what we had published with a particle tracking numerical model in the uh, in the uh, current science, and this is a regular phenomenon after a flood situation here in Chennai. And uh, I am sure that most of the part of the country, they, wherever there is a river near crisscrossing, moving, uh, flowing inside a city. Definitely, this is this is going to happen, and this is happening. At the same time, we have also seen the liters in the Lakhadi Islands, and there also we saw that some of the uh, liter. Okay, we we try to collect data on the liter uh, on different types of liter. What is getting, and we saw which even what is non-habited islands also getting a lot of liter, and which is well, which is also can be correlated to you know, fishing activities and public activities. We did some of the coastal cleanup activities as part of our awareness program. So in 2019, we did 34 beaches we took, a lot of, uh, you know, we volunteers, about 7,000 volunteers we engaged there from the schools and 26 coordinators, mostly from the university professors or the research institute scientists or some of our uh, NGOs, uh, the, the very famous NGOs, and we took their help and try to, you know, estimate the, the, what is the amount of beach litter at a particular beach at a particular time. So no doubt this is a part of International Coastal Cleanup uh, Day program, but we got some sort of ideas by 
through analyzing that data, the data that we saw that based on the density top 10 liter items in beach cleaning sites, we got food wrappers, cups, plastic pieces, straws, other beverage bottles, plastic, cash, bags, glass bottles, flowers, coconuts. Based on weight, we got bags, glass bottles, organic waste, like this, you can see glass fragments. And what we got this, most of the plastic item, what we have, uh, we got is mostly single use of plastics are coming from the tourism activities. The people who are visiting the beach goers, they are taking the material from the, the or from the nearby shop and they are littering the beaches. And some of the beaches, though the corporation or the municipality on a regular basis clean the beaches, but the awareness program, there is lack of awareness program as a result of which the same situation always exists. And another important point on the country, on the sorry, on the state wise, we looked the data and we saw also the same, same, same type of, uh, you know, scenario that is the public, the, the waste generated, beach litter is generated from the public are more than the non source. So, uh, non sourced uh, sources. Similarly, in 2021, we also tried to look at the some of the beaches. We took uh, some of the we repeated for some of the beaches. Also, we took some of the uh, other beaches and look uh, at the the same type of comparison we wanted to see because as India has promised that we are going to take out the single use of plastics by 2022. We wanted to see whether there is a reduction in our plastic single use of plastics or the, though in between many of the states have already slowly started banning, but the scenario has not improved our data source. The increase in plastic litter accumulation was observed at Goa, Maharashtra. There is a considerable decline, no doubt, in the Gujarat, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, but the, we can say not considerable, we can say to some extent to 20%. No significant difference was observed at Puducherry. So this always remains the same. That means, and also then we, as I indicated that tourism, fisheries, and these are the some of the major activities. We took some of the examples. We, we targeted, we wanted to look at only fishing villages, the beaches near to the fishing villages, the beaches which are highly used by the tourist purpose, and the beaches which are for the fishing activity and tourism, <clears throat> we try to look at those and we saw that fishing, the, whatever the case may be, the plus percentage of plastic liter are more than, say, are about 60% above or so. And you can see within two hours of our effort, we can see there is almost 130, the minimum was the 130 kg at Mahabalipuram. No doubt the Mahabalipuram beach is cleaned by the corporation every day. And uh, at the same time, in the fishing village of beach, we got 24, 20, 244 uh, kg kilogram of you know, garbage. So this shows that we have to do something very drastically. Some, uh, some sort of measures are required in creating an awareness program or through some sort of awareness program and through volunteering the people. So these are uh, in the last three, four years, we have come up with some of the publications and uh, some of the papers are uh, also on the way. So the, we try to also publish our data. So these are some of the uh, papers that has been published and you can go through. So existing environmental legislation is in India is still 1986, it is there. So there is a lot of, you know, changes in these regulations. But at the same time, though we have also made thickness, change in the thickness of the bags, change in the, you know, what type of how to, we have introduced the EPR, annual, uh, annual is a report of plastic waste, all this, but uh, what we, we are free our data or what at the last we are seeing that this is not working out still it is not working out so then what we should do this is a very important question at the same time as i told you that it is very important it is it is, it is the right time 
some innovative tools, scientists should thought or engineers should thought some innovative tools, how to, how to clean the whatever the garbage that is getting accumulated in the, you know, in the, our rivers. And this is a, a picture of Kom River of Chennai. And you can see that this is a attempt that has been made by Alfamers is a company and uh, the company is actually owned by a navy captain so ex navy captain so he got the idea that how to clean our our coast as well as how to clean our rivers so he tried to put a some sort of very floating trash like thing where so it can capture the garbage and this is one of the very, very interesting data, what we got from this, that in one year, 20,000 metric tons of liter. So, including 2,000 of metric tons of plastic, that gives, that means if you look for data wise, that a small river, which is crisscrossing a city like Chennai, it has 200,000 metric tons of plastic. So now I can have some sort of idea by collecting the information from this data that how much plastics that is get, getting into the ocean in a year. So the current status of plastic waste management in India, so municipal solid waste, approximately only 7% of plastic proportion is collected door to door as per the MSW rule 2016. In material recovery facility or transport station, plastic waste are segregated and channelized. We have no doubt ban of single of use of plastic is there plates, cups, cutleries, but still we are using also the plastic uh, plastics for road construction, co-processing of cement, even oil technology to because plasma panels technology for the oil, all these things are happening in India. But at the same time, you can say that non-formal sector, they are the, they're like rag pickers, they recycle more amount of plastics in India. And as I said, that one sort of, it is very important for us to, you know, to estimate how much plastics we are, we are allowing, we are letting into the ocean from our, from our mismanagement uh, plastics. So some of the policy recommendation and strategies to limit marine litter, they, we, in the meantime, we had a lot of discussion with different, uh, you know, organizations, different countries, and uh, in the last, uh, as I remember, in the last uh, two, three years, we had almost uh, 10 to 12 times of uh, discussions with uh, Indo-Pacific Ocean Initiative Program, with uh, SAS region, with our, within our country, with uh, experts. So some of the, these are some of the things which we are going to, uh, you know, recommend for the, in the future. And we are trying to get some of the data for our west coast and uh, state wise and the beach wise, which we are going to try and also find out some of the solutions. So proper solid management. One is collection and segregation, transportation, disposal, recycle, incineration, and landfill. Uh, it would be, it would be uh, actually, it would be nice if our country there should be no landfill, if there should be no landfill in uh, our country. Plastic waste collection and mechanism that should be deposit reform system, money for waste plastic, extended producer responsibility that the person who is producing the uh, that that is his his responsibility should be it should be given to his responsibility. But this is there already existing. But how to improvise that? At the same time, packaging designs, alternatives, eco-friendly packaging is required. Zero plastic shops. We have to stop completely to some in somewhere the other and biodegradable alternatives. That doesn't mean also here the point is what I want to highlight biodegradable alternatives we can design. Suppose we are changing our plastic plates with let us say paper plates or wooden plates or whatever wooden spoons right now from the bamboo stick spoons are coming but that also needs to be managed properly. Otherwise, that is also a form of litter, which is going to create another problem. The not exactly like plastics, but it will create a problem. So the recommendations that the social behavior, as you know, as I said, 
that we have few beaches already under program. We have blue flag program. We are all taking uh, taking uh, care of by you know regular uh, cleaning of beaches, but that is not the solution. Okay, so the social behavior at the same time that production use and recycling is very important, and uh, this can give you a, a circular economy. The government rule and penalties should be very very tough, so that it should be complete ban on the production uses of HUP. Legislation should be to give some some strict penalties. And at the same time, we need to promote new technology for the pollution and room new uh, techniques for remediation as well as for cleaning our uh, our uh, the existing river basins and our coastal waters, coastal basins. So at the same time, our scientific evidence by policymaker to make decision is very important. Here are some of the uh, examples I can give that which is also are going on in, on in any of the developed countries. You can see that established 360 degree cycle, 100% recycled pet bottles waste, convert pet flakes into resins, which is used to make paints, dustbin identified vendor, toilet cabin, Pet is also recycled to apparels, caps, and bags. So these are some of the established product developed from pet waste. The uh, <clears throat> similarly, so our pet fibers are being made, which is the this uh, Adidas made a sustainable football field, plastic bottle to see or cover by Audi, our company. Similarly, Australian Open 2020 T-shirts made in Tamil Nadu, India. So out of this much, one more than. Uh, 1.8 lakhs pet bottles to make 25,000 sars. Similarly, sard jerseys made out of marine plastic wastes, and uh, Emirates launch blankets made out made of pla uh, pla recycled plastic uh, bottles. So smart bean for smart corona warrior. So uh, it is something like smart smart bean has been uh, introduced to support collection, segregation, and disposal of used face mask. It is very important because in our study, in our, we, in between the, after the, during the COVID, we have already done the coastal cleanup campaign for more than 35 to 40 beaches during this COVID pandemic period. And we found that the number of, uh, you know, the face mask. Now, the single use of plastic, like uh, cutlery items has been changed to face mask and diapers. So this is the attitude of the people I can say that which can be collected at the source and can be recycled, but which is lacking. So this is uh, something has to be done very uh, smart way and some sort of, you know, collection, segregation and disposal is uh, necessary. Similarly, valuable products made from plastic waste, like uh, you can say pet bottles, milk pouches are used from, you know, Barsati films, plastic oven sacks are for newer putty and uh, this battery bar cases for luggages, similarly plastic carry bags for mats, PVC pipes for shoes. So some of the plastic waste are being, uh, this is one of the best example and best, uh, you know, plastic managed country that is Japan. They have the different types of, you know, the garbage box labeled and different types they, they, in this they collect at a source everywhere, all over Japan, if any high school you go, any college, university you go, any, any of the places, park or anywhere, you can find this type of separated boxes. And also this is for the incentivized collection of pet bottles, bottle collection connected with the electric money system. And so that can store collection and place the used bottles it can come to the logistic, it can recycle. Again, the recycled bottle can come as, again, beverage manufacturers and it can come to the store. This is how it is done. And this is the very, very uh, successful way, the, the, the only country in the world, which is a top country that can manage their plastics waste management in a very nice way. So similarly, there are a number of countries which have a global best practices, which we have to, from all these countries, we have to learn and we have to implement, we have to, in formulation of our policy, we have to see that how they are managing in their country and how they are, that is getting benefited down the line. 
and that can be also included in our policy papers. And the take away message, I can say that 50% of liters in single use plastic, that is, that is what the uh, we can see more than 50. So that is very important that there is a shift in public attitude is required, but no doubt with the with the Swachata campaign, we have seen that people have started taking again the old cloth back to the market and most of the people are getting conscious, they are getting awareness that to not to use the plastic bags. So similarly, switch to organic and renewable resources. We need to have a shift in design of the, our things, whatever has, and the, the consumption has to be also the use and single use and throw, that attitude has to go, as well as we have to look the circular economy, and the, very importantly, it needs to the awareness and research and education in our uh, society or in the postal stakeholder, as well as in, in our schools and colleges. So that should be no to single use of plastics. And with this, I can say that this is one of the famous picture of our prime minister. So he has <clears throat> given a vision that if we make a, a public movement, we can make our country be encountered as one among the cleanest nations. So it needs to be have a public movement, no doubt, as a researcher, as scientific data, and uh, the tools and techniques required for our the for our clean environment for our clean beaches for our clean seas oh, that is the responsibility of uh, uh, scientists scientists and the environmentalists no doubt at the same time we need to have also it a public movement and we can contribute uh, we can make our clean environment with that i thank you all so thank you sir it was uh... It's a very, it was an excellent talk actually. It's very informative and uh, it was highly relevant uh, considering the marine pollution due to the plastics and the microplastic uh, contamination. So uh, it is very important actually to also, I think it is high time that people should also know that uh, this uh, microplastics as well as the plastic pollution in India is one of the marine related disasters that we are going to face in the coming future because uh, it is going to be a very sensitive topic. And we know that uh, this marine plastics is a matter of uh, increasing concern, uh, primarily due to the harmful effects on the oceans as well as our humans. And uh, your presentation has very clearly brought out the huge quantities of the plastic debris that is occurring along the Indian coastline, uh, not only at the sea surface, and all, it is also happening at uh, different water depths because in one of the slides you have mentioned about the marina trench, where about nine samples and 25 sediment samples are showing the presence of this pollution. And uh, the release of these plastics into the marine ecosystems, uh, also you clearly brought out the different pathways and how the riverine systems play a very important role, shipping and fishing activities, and the main source which attributes uh, from the land origin. And uh, the Yes, actually, this marine plastics or the debris it poses a new risk to the health of the ocean. So that is going to be a very important, uh, very important activity that is uh, we need to actually focus more on and a uh, lot of concentrated research is required in this direction. And also that uh, because I was also looking into some of these articles on marine plastics uh, and uh, using numerical models and all, what I find is that the present ocean numerical circulation models are uh, really not able to accurately simulate the drift of these plastics because of uh, uh, this complex uh, hydrodynamics that is involved. Uh, and so the presentation was really wonderful. And actually you started your presentation with uh, the global plastic waste production and the mismanagement aspects. Uh, in particular, actually you are given a reference of the Jembex, uh, Jembex et al. 2015 paper, in which uh, uh, the projection that is given for the end of 2050, it can be anywhere from 4.8 to 12.7 million metric tons that is entering into the into the oceans. And uh, the riverine uh, plastic emissions into the ocean is found to be very substantial. Almost like about 16% is coming from the river runoff in the pie chart that we are showing. So it's, uh, it's very relevant actually. And uh, you have actually discussed about the weathering processes and uh, 
the microplastic studies, especially the research that is carried out in India, and uh, significant uh, publications that is highlighted after 2019. So there are many things actually which has to be carried out because uh, this is a very serious problem, this uh, microplastics and uh, its contamination aspects. And uh, you have very clearly brought out the studies of marine litter and the microplastics that has been carried out at NCCR. And uh, the flood, the past uh, flood beach litter events that occurred uh, during uh, 2015 in Chennai. Uh, so you mentioned about this uh, particle tracking using MIC model. MIC model. Uh, so actually, I, uh, I, my small question that I have here is, what is the res resolution, particle resolution that we can track it from this modeling? No, sir, in this, am I audible? Yeah, no, uh, audible, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a resolution means so what exactly? It means the size of the particles you are seeing? Yeah, the size of the particle. Uh, maybe th this actually, basically, this is a particle model. This is a depth averaged integrated model. Yeah. The resolution, not the microplastics. Yeah. It is the debris of the, you can uh, give the size, I think, uh, somewhere around one, uh, sorry, uh, the f uh, one, no, sorry, five millimeter beyond. So, yeah. Uh, so the, this, I think, I need to confirm. Actually, uh, this work I have, though I have not done, so I need yeah. to confirm and let you know. Okay, so sir. The depth average model, but uh, we have also released the buoy. We have seen with the coastal current how it is uh, moving. Okay, sir. So uh, another interesting thing that I observed in one of the uh, the histogram diagrams that you are showing about uh, the beach litter source percentage, the beach litter uh, source percentage. So you have given the different components basically, which is adding to this contamination. So one of the one of the contaminant is medical waste. Yes, 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 yes. So by looking into the medical waste, what I found is in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, West Bengal, and Andamans, it is prominent. But uh, when we look into the western side of India, it is absent actually. Yeah, uh, uh, exactly. But uh, the medical waste means it is it is basically syringe. We take yeah. like syringe. Or the medical waste. Now we we now we uh, have calculated is the mask face mask we took as the medical okay. waste also partly, as yeah. well as some of the uh, some of the uh, waste categorization we make, which is which is coming from the medi medical uh, means hospital origin. So okay. uh, so, uh, so no doubt these are some of the preliminary data because this is what we do with the one time data when you go. Suppose some of the beaches they regularly clean. Let us say yeah. uh, Elliot Beach is regularly clean. Suppose we do the cleaning clear our activity, we may not get all types of waste. So okay. when some of the beaches are not clean, so when you do, so this waste is definitely is a mixture of waste. So okay. this needs to be. That's why we are proposing now by so to to we are now going to propose some of the 50 beaches along the Indian coast. And to adopt the beaches by a institute, by a neighboring co college or university or a research institute. So by, by every alternate month, we can have some campaign and data. So yes. that in a year, we can get a good picture of that so that we can use it for our. So what type of, you know, beaches to beaches also, it is different. So yes. what exactly needs to be implemented at a particular beach also very important. Okay, sir. I think that's very, uh, yeah, I got the points of what you have mentioned. So, you also mentioned about the cleanup and the awareness program, which is very, very important in this direction because it requires a, a large uh, participation from uh, public participation, very much required in this particular thing to save this. So, you mentioned about the innovative tools actually to tackle this microplastic uh, contamination. For example, uh, you have shown one of the slides where actually they are using it as a barrage basically to filter out the plastic materials. So I think this is really good actually, but we need to also think about what better methods or tools can be used so that before it enters into the ocean itself, it can be filtered out, filtered out before entering into the ocean. Very good, sir. And the policy recommendations and strategies to limit this marine litter, that is also clearly brought out, sir. And uh, uh, I think uh, some, I have just noted down some three questions actually. Uh, uh, because since it is a very sensitive issue about this uh, microplastics and this uh, plastic contamination that is entering into the ocean, are there any studies that is attempted to assess the consolidated thickness and the spatial extent of this plastic waste in the continental shelf region of India? 
No, sir. So far, so far, not not attempted. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, so because these are the because till now, whatever the studies, as I told you, limited to beaches. Because Only to the very, beaches. Very, very, uh, very important uh, yeah. to have funding. Okay, it requires a lot of funding. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so it is like the who, whichever universities, neighboring universities near a beach, based yeah. on their opportunities, they have studied. Okay, so far. Yeah. And as a okay. research organization, we have initiated of studying some of the okay. continent up to continental self water sediment because we have some facilities like NIT is having some of the you know the ships and say yeah. because ship is a, is a prime requirement so we have not studied but now we are thinking now we are planning it is something like we are getting some of the camera yeah. by looking at the camera actually there are some near the river is there any spot where it is getting accumulated that is very important because suppose let us say because as the paper says that some of the uh, paper says that uh, the minor rivers the small rivers with the in the urban city they are bringing more plastics than the major rivers so if that is true then suppose rivers you can take example of comb rivers where maybe we we are the chances of getting this plastic accumulated whether they are getting dissipated up to what depth and all these things we need to have a survey then we yes. can also at the same time we can plan to even to clean the ocean even to yes. clean that area by using trawler and uh, some methods we have to think but this is also will give us some idea about whether there are presence of plastics or not yeah uh, so the next question actually is sir are there any best practices actually that can be adopted in addressing this contamination because you mentioned about a very good example of japan yeah. Uh, uh, because uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, the edu education is very much important in uh, educating the people, but it's not only that we need to have a attitude also, behavioral attitude towards this. I think uh, that is somehow, somehow lacking, maybe in the, at least in the, we need to do it. So it has always been practice. stated at many mm -hmm. places that the, the only solution is the the at the source we have to we have to pick up the things at the source exactly sir at the source yeah uh, like if you see if a small example if you give newspaper that yeah. gets immediately recirculated or that somebody comes old newspaper this we can sell the newspaper and this uh, newspaper can go to recycling but the yeah. same system so when the, some money is some uh, price is attached to a value so similarly this plastic suppose a bottle of uh, let us say a bottle of water we are buying and we yeah. are buying for 20 rupees we can make it 40 rupees 20 rupees you attach to the bottle anybody brings back that can 20 rupees you will get back you will get it back so yeah i think like uh, yeah. Of practice is required in the country and which yeah. is, has to be which has and that should be the responsibility of the producer also so that's yeah. why that the producer should make some sort of uh, you know mechanism and yeah. the, uh, the our legislation our rules should also yeah. allow I means so should uh, also make some sort of uh, uh, rules we should make so that this can work and it is possible as i say when we are doing al almost uh, in the last 2 3 years we have made something like uh, 70 to 80 beaches uh, you know coastal cleanup activities we did whenever we go and we found a beautiful response from the people people are everybody is aware of that that we should not we are we are aware of our own cleanliness but it is becoming a sort of a general attitude which needs to be uh, relooked which needs to be how to improvise people's attitude behavior as you right. said so then it things can improve definitely it will improve yeah so so I think so. The, these are my questions. Let me look into the chat box. Uh, uh, so chat box, I don't find any questions, but actually there is a lot of appreciation from uh, the participants about the talk. They, uh, they found it very informative and- uh, Thank you, thank you, sir, thank you. Yeah, and uh, okay, sir. So thank you very much, sir. Actually, it was a very excellent talk and it was, it's a new topic even for me also, because uh, though I'm interested in this area that uh, I'm trying to learn, uh, actually, and... sir, actually, we are working on the, you know, now numerical modeling for the Bay of Bengal yeah. and also for our uh, Arabian Sea. And yeah. also, we are also collaborating with Jamstake uh, for yeah. uh, for the remote sensing study as well as artificial intelligence and marine lead and machine yeah. learning. 
So there are some collaborations are going on. So I think you can also be part of our team and say you can also contribute scientifically. We can work together. That is absolutely. Yes, sir. It will be very good. I know good. your expertise, and uh, so it will be nice. So if we can work for the yeah. yeah, and you can also some of the some of your students from IIT, yeah. you can give them this topic as uh, as part of their thesis. So it will yeah. be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It is really it's very it's very important topic. Definitely, it is a very important topic. And I think uh, this has to be this particular area has to be taken with the high priority. Actually, this is my plastic uh, pollution, and uh, it is one of one among the eight uh, different disasters, ocean-related disasters. One among that is the plastics. Yes. So I think uh, exactly. So thank you very much, sir. On behalf of the Ocean Society of India, I sincerely thank you for this wonderful presentation, and uh, I believe that all the participants have really enjoyed your presentation and uh, more young people actually come forward and take up this topic for uh, research. Okay, thank sir. you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Namaste.